time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, and today we're gonna be unboxing and reviewing a portable monitor by Jashik. This is the on-lap portable monitor. It's a 13.3 inch IPS panel that can be powered by USB. Now, if you guys remember, when I went to New York to the World Maker Fair earlier this year, I brought an AOC USB monitor with me. Now, AOC makes these units that you plug in via USB cable, but they're really, really kind of quirky and the USB doesn't offer the fastest refresh rates and there's a lot of artifacts and things like that and it broke on me when I traveled to New York so I ended up just throwing it in the garbage can there so I didn't have to bring it back. Now this guy, on the other hand, actually accepts multiple inputs. You can do HDMI, you can do DisplayPort, you can even do VGA with it and it's an IPS display which means you can look at it at off angles and you're not gonna have any problems. Now if any of you guys have done anything with software development or video editing on a laptop, you always know that having an extra screen is very, very important. And carrying around a big desktop display, well I mean these are outrageous but even a normal size desktop display obviously isn't practical for traveling so this fills a big hole in my life so I'd like to say thank you to Jashik for sending me the on lap portable monitor so let's go ahead and uh, open it up and take a look All right, well, the first thing I noticed is I like the packaging. It actually has a nice little carrying handle on it too, so you can actually use the box after you've opened it to transport it if you want. But my hope is that it'll fit comfortably into my laptop bag, because ultimately, this is gonna be an accessory for my laptop. However, if you wanted an auxiliary display for say your PC, to have like on your desk to display things like web pages and things like that as another monitor, but not have it be in the way, this would also be a great option. All right, let's go ahead and open it up. Let's see, we just slide this out of the bottom, flip the top open. And we have foam. Oh, foam. Mm. And we have what appear to be a couple little Velcro straps and a manual. Okay, I guess these are for keeping your cables managed. And a little manual that urges us to read it before we use this thing. Mm. Nah, we'll read it later when we need it. All right, so here we presumably have the screen. It's actually fairly lightweight. Let's go ahead and open it up. Ah, it's in this nice, this is actually the same type of material they use for like when you buy cameras and stuff. They put them in, it's actually a really, really nice little bag. I might actually keep that just for keeping the screen from getting scratched up. All right, it says on the back here, it says how to take monitor out. It says that you just flip this up and pull it out. So you push and pull like so. All right, and there you have the screen. And it doesn't look all that dissimilar to like an iPad. Like I have a couple white iPads and they look similar to this, only a lot smaller. But I'd like to note that this is pretty cool because it comes with this cover that goes on it that protects the screen. So when you're sticking it in your laptop bag, you're not gonna have a problem with it getting scratched up. Also, it looks like it doubles as a monitor stand. It's got like this little magnetic guy that folds in. That's, that's clever, I didn't know I had that, that's cool. All right, looks like we have some little compartments here with cables in them. All right, what do we have here? We have a pretty heavy duty looking HDMI cable. We have what appears to be a USB cable. It looks like it has two plugins for the laptop and one for the screen. Now they did this on the AOC monitor too and the reason being is it requires a full two amps to operate. So by plugging it into two one amp USB ports, you get the two amps you need. Now what I'm wondering is if you can just plug it into a single USB if you have a port capable of delivering two amps. So we'll try that out in a bit. Now this is a nice touch. They included a wall adapter so you can actually plug this USB cable into the wall and it looks like it come, mine came with the right power adapter for where I live, I'm sure yours would too. So this guy right here is so you can plug it in the wall. And since it only has one plug and it looks like it produces, uh, looks like two amps. So this guy right here, you do only have to plug one in if you have a two amp supply, that's cool. Also, I like that they included that because if I have my laptop set at a desk somewhere and I'm not out working remotely, it's nice to be able to plug everything in so you're not drawing all that power off USB and draining your laptop battery. Yeah, I think that's it. I don't see anything else in here, guys. What you guys don't know is there's just a huge stack of boxes behind me taking up the whole other half of the room. First world problems. Okay, so the screen, here we have it. Let's go ahead and pull all this little plastic junk off of it. Looks fantastic. Does not look used at all. There are no scratches or anything on it. 
Now, just taking a quick look around on the side here, it looks like you have some controllers. I'm guessing like brightness up and down, something else, another control, a power button. I have no idea what half of those do, but we'll figure it out. It looks like you have a USB input, you have VGA, you have display port. Now, it kind of looks like you have another USB cable out. I need to figure out what that's for. Okay, maybe we do need to consult the manual. Okay, so according to the manual, there's two USBs on the monitor. And that's so you can run two separate USB cables if you need to carry one amp from each of them. Or you can just run one cable to one of them and it'll work just fine. It just requires five volts at two amps. Also, you have a VGA input, you have a mini display port input, an HDMI input, and headphones out. So that does mean that those are probably speakers on the display. It also says that if you're using HDMI or display port out, you will get sound from the screen. So apparently this thing does have speakers in it. So I'm guessing these are probably volume up and volume down. All right, so now if we take the base, the cool thing about the base here is that you can take this guy, put it where you want it. So now you can change the tilt angle. So there's there's the highest tilt angle right there. So it's sitting up, or you can lean it back so that it's laying against the table, or you can lean it way, 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 way back and just lay it flat. And it is rubberized. This is a rubberized coating on here, so it does grip the desk really well. It doesn't slide. I already ran into a little snag that I don't really like, and that's if you look at the side of this thing, it has DisplayPort, VGA, and HDMI, and they all use the same proprietary connector. And I know they're different, so the fact that it fits in each one of these little ports was a little bit cause for concern. Well, I did a little research and it turns out that you do need the specific cables for this for VGA, and you need the DisplayPort, and the only one that they include in the box is the HDMI. Now granted, HDMI is the most common, probably, but notice it's a large HDMI and not the small one. So this would be good for like plugging your laptop or plugging this thing into a device like a DVD player or a bigger electronic that has a full HDMI. So if you wanna use a smaller HDMI, you have to buy the converters and you have to buy the specific cables for this if you wanna use VGA or DisplayPort. Now, what I did with my laptop was, I have a little adapter here from Monoprice that goes from HDMI to the Thunderbolt so that I can plug it in as an auxiliary monitor. So I can just come over here and plug it into my Thunderbolt. There we go, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it around the back here, plug it into the screen, and I'm gonna plug it into the port that says HDMI. Okay, so now we have the power cable, which is included. We're gonna go ahead and plug that into the bottom most port, bring that around the back, plug it into the laptop. I'm just gonna start off by just plugging in one of the USB connectors. Oh, look at that, she's powering up. Hey, well, that was easy. All right, well, it's already displaying what my MacBook has. Let me turn this little light down over here. Okay, I can already tell it's an IPS panel because it's not color shifting. It gets a little dim when you get way off to the side, but the colors are accurate. I mean, you can even look at it compared to like the laptop screen here. You can see they're actually really, really similar in color. So it is a pretty high-end panel. So just remember guys, you will need to buy those adapter cables. Now I'm gonna try something here. I'm gonna try moving it from HDMI down to display port and see what happens. Okay, it says no signal. Now you can open up the menu. There's a little button here on the side and you can select which one you want. So display port, okay, no signal. HDMI, no signal. VGA, no signal. So we'll move it back up to HDMI. Immediately the laptop screen flickered. You can see it dropped the resolution of the laptop down to 1080p because this is a 1080p screen and this is a 1920 by 1200 screen. So let's go ahead and select HDMI and there you can see everything's fine. You can also adjust the brightness of the screen by going into the menu and there's all kinds of options for volume of the speakers and all that. And you can even change the color temperature and stuff to make it you know, anything you want. So it's got all the same features as like a, a regular screen. So in all honesty, it is a very bright screen. I mean, I have my MacBook Pro at 100% and it looks pretty much the same. The MacBook might be just slightly, ever so slightly bright, brighter, but not by much. All right, so let's go ahead and configure this as a secondary display. So now I have them in side-by-side -side mode, just like you do like on your desktop computer. And now I can drag windows back and forth between them. So here's my Twitter. We'll drag that over. And it's, it's a full speed display. No artifacts, everything looks good. So compared to the experience I had with the AOC USB screen, this is light years beyond it because the AOC screen one, uh, the color wasn't that good on the screen and it had a lot of artifacts because it was transmitting the video signal over USB. And also when you were scrolling, it wasn't smooth at all and there was, there was noticeable input lag. Since this is a true HDMI screen, 
you could actually play a game on it. If you wanted, you could hook up something like your NVIDIA Shield to this. You could hook up anything that has an HDMI out. You can easily connect to this. If your laptop has a display port, you have to buy that extra cable, which I'll try to find it and put a link to the video description. But with that cable, then you can plug it into anything with the display port. And if you have old school stuff like VGA or an old laptop with a VGA out, like honestly, I don't know who uses VGA anymore, but if you love your VGA, you can still use this screen. Okay, I opened up CSGO here on my MacBook. I'm gonna go ahead and get into the game. We're gonna take a look. I'm trying to compare them looking at both screens because I know the MacBook has a really good screen on it. This is the MacBook Pro 17. <laughs> I'm actually not playing with the mouse. I'm playing with the trackpad, so this should be interesting. Okay, so I'm looking for ghosting. There is a little bit of ghosting on the screen, but it's not bad at all. I've seen way worse just on stock laptop screens. But the color looks great on it. It is 1080p. Oh, man down, headshot. Now looking off angle, you do lose a little bit of brightness, but the color accuracy stays, which is what you want. That's how you know it's an IPS panel. Oh. Calm your tits, dude. Touchpad gaming at its finest. Ooh. Yeah, the ghosting isn't bad. So after playing some Counter-Strike Go, it's obvious that the ghosting is very, very, very minimal. Most people probably wouldn't even notice it. So this would be a good screen if you're doing mobile gaming and hooking it up to consoles and stuff like that. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna take it down and hook it to my consoles. I wanna see if we can actually get this thing to work powered straight off the consoles. All right, so here I have the screen connected up to my PlayStation 4 right here. And I even have it plugged into the USB ports on the front of the PlayStation 4 getting power. So the screen is being powered by the PlayStation 4 and it's connected through HDMI. And I don't notice any significant input lag, which is really nice. I'll turn around. Playing Outlast, it's a pretty dark game, but it's all that I had ready to go that didn't need updates. But that's pretty cool, you can just hook it up to a console and it works. So it's basically got all the same functionality as like a monitor or a television as far as inputs, but it's just very small and compact and easy to lug around. Now I plugged the Xbox One right down here into the G-Chic screen and it worked perfectly. All I had to do was plug in one USB cable on the side. I didn't even have to plug them all in. Now the screen looks great. The brightness and color are dead on. This is Forza Horizon 2, I'm just running the intro. And the sound that you're hearing is actually coming from the screen. You can kind of hear it a little bit. But I'm gonna be honest, that's full volume. It's not very loud. And the sound is clear, but there's like zero bass, as you would expect from something like this. So I wouldn't recommend this for sound. But for the picture quality, I think the color is impressive and the IPS panel in this thing is actually very impressive for what it is. I could sit down and play games on this all day long. Well guys, overall the G-Chic on lap 13 inch screen actually worked really, really well. We have it sitting here attached to the MacBook Pro through HDMI, it works great. I only have a couple of gripes about the screen. Now, the biggest gripe that I probably have about the screen overall is that it needs all the proprietary cables. I wish they had to just put standard HDMI and DisplayPort, the mini versions, on the side. Then you could plug directly into it and you wouldn't have to carry around cables with you. Aside from that, the rest of the cons that I just want to get out of the way real quick is that it only has the ability to sit in portrait. It doesn't have a landscape option. You can't adjust this thing on the back to put it in landscape. And honestly, when it comes to a screen like this, having it in landscape is a huge advantage because usually you want to use it for email and dock writing and stuff like that. So I do have a gripe about that, but the neat thing about it is, is I'm confident that I can come up with a jerry-rigged solution to make it work. Now, the speakers in the unit are pretty much weak. I mean, they're, they're almost a non-starter. I wouldn't even use them. They don't produce any bass and the volume level is very, very low. But on the plus side, the screen has a lot going for it, especially in this type of application. The biggest thing that I really, really like about this screen that I'll show you is when I unplug it, is that it comes with a protector. So you can pretty much just open this up, put it in, slap it shut, and now you don't run any risk of damaging your screen and transport, especially when you put it in your laptop bag. I'm pretty sure that's how my AOC screen got broken, is the screen was completely exposed. I'd slide in the laptop bag, things would get banged around, especially when I'm flying and stuff like that and taking it in and out so much. 
I like that this has that solution in mind. I also love that the screen has a menu button like a real computer screen. You can play with the color temperature settings. You can change the brightness. You can change the contrast. You can even adjust the sharpness of the display, which I think is fantastic and something that you usually don't see on little compact screens like this. I also love that it's very thin. It's not that much thicker than an iPad, so it's very, very easy to store and take with you. And it gives you quite a bit of screen real estate compared to what you already have on your laptop. Now you couple that with a true 1080p IPS panel, which is nice because you don't have to have the screen pointing directly at you to get color accuracy, which is really important if you're doing stuff in Photoshop and Adobe Premiere, which is what I'm probably primarily gonna use this for when I'm traveling is for video editing on my laptop. Now, obviously if you're a gamer, this also has really great applications because if you're traveling, you can actually power the screen off of an Xbox or a PlayStation 4. Unfortunately, the Wii U didn't, didn't power it. Even with two USBs, it couldn't produce two amps. Big surprise there, Nintendo. But uh, for the most part, it worked great with all of the consoles. It did show a very, very clear, crisp picture. And I did see a little bit of ghosting when I was gaming, but it was very, very negligible. And I don't think it would really affect many people's gameplay. And the input lag was almost non-existent. All right, well, there's only one last thing to do with this screen and that's put it in the laptop bag. So let's start off. I've got my MacBook Pro 17. Go ahead and unplug all those. slider in and then we got our screen and of course we got to put the protector on it so let's go ahead and pop it out flip it around pop it back in place okay so we're all protected slide that in right in front of the laptop both things fit perfectly in the bag now as for the cables you do have to take the usb power cable with you i'd also recommend taking the usb wall adapter just in case whatever device you're connecting to it doesn't have power. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you'd like to buy your own G Chic on lap 13 inch screen, go ahead and look down in the video description. I have an affiliate link down there for Amazon. And if you have any other questions about it, come over and ask me. I am at Barnacles on Twitter. And like I said, primarily I'm gonna be using this for video editing as is a secondary screen, but the applications are pretty much endless for this. If you wanted, you could set one on your desk and plug it right into your graphics card and use it as your auxiliary screen. If you have an NVIDIA surround setup and you just want a small screen on your desk to keep track of email and web and stuff like that. Or I could even plug it into this digital SLR camera I'm talking into right now and use it as a monitor. So there are a lot of applications for this. Hell, you could even duct tape it to an NVIDIA shield and have, have a mega NVIDIA shield. Damn, I should have done that in this video. If you guys want me to do that in a video, that, that, that might be a good jerry-rigged. All right, guys, well, I'm gonna wrap this up. I hope you enjoyed the video. Till next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself. <laughs>